Hi, I'm Kevin Tates, working alongside LMC Truck to bring you some technical information and videos that we hope will make your truck restoration project go even smoother. In this video, we're going to address a common problem with the 92 to 98 F250 and 350 diesel trucks, namely the self-destructing radiator support. The problem with the original radiator support is that due to diesel vibration, moisture penetration and chassis flex, the original support develops stress cracks that only get worse over time and eventually it just kind of comes apart. I wanted to show you some of the key points of the exclusive LMC truck replacement design that will solve that problem permanently. When you look closely at this reinforcement, you'll notice a perimeter weld all the way around the outside. That not only makes it a stronger weld than just the spot welds, but it also eliminates moisture penetration to the back side of this plate. Even at the bottom of the radiator support, we've got a full seam weld in between the two plates. That's designed, again, to stop moisture penetration from getting in between the two pieces of metal. And if you look right here, on top of the upper part of the radiator support being made of a heavier gauge steel, these reliefs are also stamped in to give even more strength to these common prone areas that typically stress crack. Another cool feature is that the jack handle clips are already pre-installed on the support, riveted in place, which just saves you time. This support also comes covered in a thick EDP coating, which helps with corrosion and looks good doing it. So obviously we're not working on a brand new vehicle and the LMC truck catalog has full replacement parts for everything that you would possibly need, including the bushings for the radiator support, shim stacks, hardware, spring steel clips, support bolts, the brackets for the radiator support that mount to the frame, even the radiator bracket to the support. Everything that you might possibly need to replace your support, well, it's all in the catalog. Now, as far as tools go, you're going to need a good socket set and a wrench set, both standard and metric sizes. Impact tools, probably a good idea as well. And don't forget your penetrating oil. For safety gear, bring your common sense, a good pair of safety glasses, and some gloves. Now, here's something you may not think about right away. Get some sandwich bags and some markers. That way you can bag and tag your fasteners and keep track of everything. Speaking of keeping track, take pictures of everything under the hood. That way you know where everything goes when it comes time to reassemble. On the difficulty meter, this is not that bad, just changing parts. I'll give it a 3 out of 5 on the difficulty scale, but you may want to plan on having a buddy help you lift some of the heavy stuff. As far as time goes, plan on a solid day to get this done if you've got a really well equipped shop. Weekend warriors and DIY guys, eh, give yourself the weekend. Teardown starts with the grill and headlight bezels, which are held in place with Phillips screws. Now the rest of the headlight assembly comes out with two fasteners located on the back side of the radiator support. If you've got small hands and small tools, you don't have to take the battery out, but I want to show you where they are. So we're going to take both batteries out so we can have access and make it a little easier on ourselves. Unplugging the headlight and turn signal bulbs is pretty straightforward. Just be gentle with your wiring and set it out of the way. Ford is all over the place with fastener sizes. These are 11 millimeter nuts on the headlight bezel studs. I'm using a quarter drive deep well for most of this disassembly. After twisting out the side marker and running light bulbs, the bezel comes away easily. Alright, so this stud is actually molded into the back side of the headlight bezel itself and they turn out of there. Sometimes the plastic gets brittle and breaks. So we're just going to hold it from the front side of the vice grip and back off the 11 millimeter nut and we'll glue it back into the bezel or we'll get a new one. The grill reinforcement panel is held in place with 8 millimeter bolts that we're going to bag and label just to keep track of them. Now this looks like a Phillips head screw, but it's not. It's a push pin that's cleverly disguised as a Phillips head. I'm not putting any pressure on it while I back it out because it is actually threaded, but it's a pin and you're still not done. And you pry the first part out and you can see how it works. The pin expands the ears and that's your fastener, that's the action. But you want to keep these pieces together, don't lose them, and just be gentle when you're pulling them out. And 
the hood latch gets unbolted from the support bracket and the release cable disconnected. Remove the hood release cable. And that gets fed back through the radiator support. Be aware that there are several wire looms and sensors attached to your core support. Disconnect everything so you don't damage any of your wiring system. The air deflectors play an important role in any engine, so make sure you understand where and how they're attached so they can be reinstalled properly. These are installed with plastic pushpins. The hood latch support could really be left on the support and transferred later, but we're taking all of this off now and labeling the fasteners. To protect the radiator core from damage if it hits the fan, I'm using a piece of cardboard and taping it to the top of the radiator while we remove and reinstall it. It's a common ground stud for several underhood systems that attaches to the top of the support. It's very important to make sure everything gets reinstalled properly on this stud. And that way, I know they're all on the same stud. There are left and right support brackets that are attached to the support and inner aprons it gets removed. Access to the fasteners is tight. Ratcheting wrenches are a big time saver here. The radiator is held in place with four bolts to the radiator support brackets. The fan shroud is the same way. Once the fan shroud is unbolted and set back, we can drain the radiator and remove it. This truck is high enough off the ground where we can use buckets to collect the antifreeze, since it's a couple of gallons capacity. That said, some absorbing mats might help contain the mess that is inevitably going to happen draining a radiator. Once the upper and lower radiator hoses are removed, the radiator can be lifted out. Stuffing a rag in the lower hose is a nice trick to keep the antifreeze from dripping out with the radiator removed. Ours is an aftermarket aluminum radiator, which makes it nice and light. Keep in mind, new radiators, shrouds, and even electric fan kits are available from LMC Truck. The opening in the support is large enough to be able to remove the AC condenser, slide it back through and out of the way without discharging the coolant, which is expensive if done properly and could be illegal if discharged into the atmosphere. The lines are flexible and will allow you to carefully slip the condenser through the opening and secure it safely out of the way. Now with everything out of the way, we can remove the remaining fasteners that attach the support to the truck.
We're down to the last bolts, which are the radiator support bolts that mount to the frame. Now, we got a new bushing kit just in anticipation of this. If your radiator support is rusty, it's probably well served that you go to the LMC truck catalog and when you purchase your radiator support, get the bushing and bolt kit because if you look at this thing, well, it's rusty and it's probably going to break off and there's no point even trying with this. We're just going to cut it off and go straight to the new set. And don't forget about the four large flat washer bolts that hold the splash shields to the bottom of the radiator support, like I did. Finally, you've got two fine thread eight millimeter bolts that come in through the back side. This one goes right there, and there's another one down a little bit lower. And when those out of the way, this bracket can get out of the way. And now we can pull the radiator support up and out from one side. We're going to protect the painted surfaces with some absorbing mats, just in case the heavy support comes in contact with the stone deflector. Paint repair gets expensive and the radiator support has sharp edges. Alright, so we've got a couple of brackets to transfer over as well as a lower air deflector, but I wanted to show you what happens when the moisture penetrates between the plates on the original radiator support. You've probably seen this on your own. It rusts, it corrodes, and it makes the stress cracks even worse. You can truly see the benefit of the seam weld around these reinforcement plates on the LMC truck support. Transferring brackets, well, it's pretty straightforward. We're using the original hardware if it's in good enough condition and new LMC truck hardware on any damaged fasteners. Lubricating the threads, it's a good idea. And since our original inner reinforcement brackets are still in great shape, we're going to save a little cash and just reinstall them. The lower air deflector is held in with steel rivets from the factory as well as plastic push pins. We're reinstalling it with new push pins from the catalog. New J clips get installed at the bottom of the support since the original ones were rusty. The ID tag on the original support has vehicle information, but it's stapled to the support. I'm just going to remove it and reinstall it in the same place on the new support using a self-drilling screw. The LMC truck catalog shows the exploded diagram of exactly how your new shim stack should go according to the original equipment. However, this truck's not original, so we're going to use the shim stack that they had so we have the same level on the radiator support, which starts with the upper bushing, the owner's spacer, and a large flat washer. Use this down. Driver's side reinforcement plate has locating pins. Tell me where to put it. Good enough for now. Whether you're using new fasteners or the original equipment fasteners, it's always a great idea to add a little bit of lubricant to the threads. That way it keeps them from galling.
Okay, now we gotta sneak some fasteners in. So I like to use a drift pin to line everything up. Now I can hold that in place, sneak my fastener in the bottom hole. This just comes in handy when you're working in tight areas and you need more than one set of hands. Thank you, swivel socket. from the battery tray to the brace from the top. Now we can get the last two inside the sport. This bracket slides in, fasteners go to the inside, to the fender first. Pay attention to the condition of the ground eyelets. Any corrosion needs to be cleaned off. Ours looked fine. The new bolts get threaded into the bushings and tightened down with an impact gun. Okay, obviously we can't get a camera down in that recess, but you can see the stud and you can see where this washer goes and why it's got the slots in it. This washer goes on top, followed by the nut and we use a 19 millimeter deep well impact socket and a swivel. And that's that. Keep in mind, there's plenty of adjustment with all of the brackets on your new support, including the ones that mount the support to the fenders if you need to move things around for fitment. Did you label your fasteners? We like this. Don't forget this, <laughs> impedes the water flow. When you're reinstalling the reinforcement panel, make sure your lighting harnesses aren't pinched and that they're routed correctly. Since our plastic wasn't broken, just the stud stripped out, a little epoxy on the stud will lock it back into place and repair it. Hose clamp is a good idea. And last, we'll get these splash shields locked down. 
Now don't be alarmed if all of the coolant you remove doesn't go back into the radiator right away. The hoses and overflow reservoir take up some capacity and usually a heat cycle with the truck running will normalize everything and you can just top off the coolant overflow jug. Now don't forget you've changed the place of your hood latch. So we've got a flashlight in there to see. You can hear it and you can see that it's offset to the driver's side. So we're going to loosen that off a little bit, maybe move it over 16th or an eighth of an inch. We'll test it again. And it looks to be, I don't hear that, yeah, look, it's good and centered, no interference, good deal. Well, I hope this video shows you that changing out the radiator core support for your 92 to 98 F250 or 350 diesel truck, well, it's a project that you can do. In the meantime, make sure you check out the LMC Truck catalog or go to lmctruck.com to see what other kind of parts are available for your project.